I'm Dave Hook, President of Plain Hook Aviation Services. In this video, I will briefly present closed circuit television systems as they relate to protecting the assets and businesses at general aviation airports. In terms of protecting airplanes, equipment, and the buildings which support them, the best form of visual security is still the human being. CCTV cameras can't get suspicious. They can't smell something burning or hear something out of the ordinary, combine that information with what they see or don't see, assess all of these inputs as normal or not normal, and decide to contact others for help or not. So let me say that the best source of security at our general aviation airports is the pilots, tenants, and staff. Our GA community should always form the core component to any security system. But even the most enthusiastic normal user at the airport needs to eat, sleep, and do all those things involved with living. So for those times when the population of users at our airports decreases, or even becomes zero, it's prudent to have a system of asset protection which covers those times. A CCTV system can provide surveillance which doesn't care if it's day or night, a weekday, weekend, or holiday, or if the flying weather is good or bad. And before we get into specifics, I want to emphasize something. A CCTV system does not take the person out of the loop. A human being and their judgment will always be required to assess whether a security alarm requires a response or is just a false alarm. The only real question is when the human being gets involved with the security event, while the event takes place, or after it's happened. Before purchasing a CCTV system, it is important that you understand your visual surveillance needs. There are three general levels of performance for CCTV camera systems. Detection, Identification, and Recognition. At the detection level, we're not so concerned about knowing who or what is in the scene as we are with knowing that something is out there in view. This level of image is the lowest level of image portrayal and tends to be used as a type of detection tripwire. Simply put, at the detection level, you know that something changed or moved, but not necessarily what. An image at the identification level enables us to differentiate between kinds of intruders. The CCTV system enables us to determine that an intruder was a human as opposed to a deer or passing tumbleweed. For many security applications, this level is acceptable for determining if a response to an alarm is required or if the alarm is false. At this level and higher, the CCTV system is typically used to support other detection alarms. The recognition level for a CCTV image enables the viewer to read the numbers and letters on a vehicle license plate or sufficiently identify an individual to have sufficient confidence to know if they are a particular individual or not. The recognition level is the highest of the three levels and normally involves medium to high resolution cameras and full visible spectrum light sources. When considering your needs for CCTV systems, consider what level of image you need. The price differences between the three levels of images can be quite large. Here's a simplified diagram which shows the basics of a CCTV system. Across the top are the CCTV cameras which are generally comprised of a video sensor, a lens, the housing, and some source of power. Co-located with each camera is the lighting system which supports it. Even if you make use of available light and do not have a separate system installed to produce light for your camera, do not forget the importance of appropriate lighting for each camera so it can do its job adequately. Next, there is some way to get the image, whether it's analog or digital, from each camera to the conditioner switcher unit or to the controlling computer system. Most times wires are involved but there are times when transmitter and receiver units relay the signal. Next, there is normally going to be at least one display unit 
but there could be multiple display units. The images from each camera are stored on some type of device. Very old systems might make use of a video cassette recorder, but modern systems make use of a digital video recorder, or DVR. Next, there is typically some type of secondary recording device which allows for images to be printed or recorded onto another digital device, perhaps a compact disc or a thumb drive. Finally, if your CCTV system makes use of intelligent video software, you may have specific rules for each camera which result in an alarm being sounded or a notification being sent. You've probably heard the analogy of the digital transmission line for your computer being like a water pipe. There are only so many ones and zeros which can be pushed through the line at any given time. Therefore, high resolution images may take time to receive, but not because the CCTV transmitter is slow and not because the receiving device is slow, but because the line between them can allow only so much flow. So the higher the resolution of the images, the more ones and zeros must pass through the pipe. The number of frames per second per camera also impact the flow rate of information. Finally, color images require more bits and bytes to transmit than simple black and white or what some call grayscale images. So you should consider what level of image recording you require because the higher the bandwidth required, the more expensive the system. One thing to be aware of is the difference in image quality between what you see with real-time images from the system versus what gets recorded. They don't necessarily have to be the same, just acceptable for your purposes. Caveat emptor. Finally, don't be lulled into thinking that somehow law enforcement is going to be able to take a low resolution file and enhance it into a high resolution image. There's an old saying, you can't get a silk purse from a sow's ear. Make sure that the image produced by your system is sufficient for your security needs. The tendency in purchasing CCTV systems is to overbuy on cameras and underbuy on the support and recording equipment. If you need help with determining your security needs or the security equipment specifications for your airport or flying operations, don't hesitate to contact us here at Plainhook at plainhook at hotmail.com or call us at country code 1, area code 210-653-8442. Cheers from the Alamo.